Hello everyone. Welcome back to my Sheep Hears My Voice Ministries. On today, I have a word for me and many others. I always start with my first, myself first because I know God is speaking to me as well. And the word that God gave me as I was writing yesterday, he told me, he said, we so faithful to leadership, but we're not faithful to God. We're faithful to leadership, but we're not faithful to God. And in Exodus 20 and verse number three, the word of God says, thou shalt have no other God before me. And that means that we don't put nothing and nobody before God. And when he said this to me yesterday, he put it in my heart. I kind of felt bad because I thought about myself and how you hustle for leadership, leadership. You do anything for leadership. You will clean, you will cook, wash, spend your money, spend your bill money, give it all up, give up your time everything for leadership. But then when it comes to God, when it comes down to devotion and sitting down and being a disciple of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that's hard to do. When God says, thou shalt have no other God before me, that's hard to do. When God says, let no filthy communication proceed out of our mouths, that's hard to do. We make, we make it seem like it's so hard to serve God because we choose, we choose to put leadership before God. And yes, we all have done it and we all still doing it. Some of us are still doing it. You think because you serving your leadership day and night that you serving God, you wrong. You have to have your own personal relationship with our Father, which are in heaven. You have to seek him yourself. You don't seek a relationship with the Lord through leadership. You seek your relationship directly from the heavenly father and a lot of us gonna be in trouble because we think that we saved sanctified and filled with the holy ghost because we serve leadership and god is not pleased with it because if he was he wouldn't have never told me to bring this word We so faithful to leadership, but we're not faithful to God. And we're going to have to answer to that because it's in his written word in Exodus 20 and 3. Thou shalt have no other God before me. God's little G, God's before me. We don't put leadership before God. On no day through the week do we put leadership before God. Now, if we go to 1 Samuel chapter 8, starting at verse 6, it talks about Israel rejects God as king. And that's exactly what we do. We reject God when we serve in leadership to the point of exhaustion. When we serve in leadership, to the point of you being sick and going into the hospital. You serve in leadership to the point where you can't even pay your bills because you take everything you got in your wallet and empty it out on the pulpit. And you leave God out. You're not serving God when you sit there and empty out everything out your wallet on the pulpit. How is that serving God? So let's go to the word because this word is very, very, very important. 
and we need to pay attention to it. Include me first. Because we're going to have to answer to God, why was he on the back burner and why was leadership first? We're going to have to answer to that. So if you're doing it, you might want to repent of doing that. Because don't nothing and nobody come before God. Not your spouse, not your children, not leadership, not your grandkids. Don't nobody, nobody on this earth comes before our Father, which are in heaven. Israel rejects God as king. 1 Samuel chapter 8 verse 6. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord. So the people mumbling and grumbling, we want a king to judge us. We want somebody over us. And just because they couldn't see God, they feel like that God ain't real. So we want a tangible king over us. We want somebody over us that we can see. Because we want to praise him. And worship them. That's what they wanted to do. And the Lord said to Samuel. Heed the voice of the people. And all that they say to you. God was saying. Give them what they want then. Because see God not going to fight with us. Give them what they want Samuel. When Samuel was in prayer. To the Lord. When he went before. When he went to God. For these people that was complaining. For Israel that was complaining. Saying that they wanted a king over them. God said give them what they want. For they have not rejected you. But they have rejected me. That I should not reign over them. So they didn't reject Samuel. As God chose a vessel. They was rejecting God. See, that's what they that's what they failed to realize. They was rejecting God. And in some cases, God do send pastors out and real prophets and teachers out to help and to serve in his kingdom. And when God has sent these people out that he chose and you reject what they telling you because God works through these people. He's chosen. And when you reject that word or whatever that direction or whatever it was that that person told you that, that God told them to tell you when God really said it, you didn't reject that person. You reject God. And that's a dangerous thing. So he said, they, re they didn't reject you, Samuel. They reject me that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them out of Egypt, even to this day, with which they have forsaken me and served other gods. So they are doing to you also. So what he's saying is that they, what they did to me ever since I brought them out of Egypt, they doing the same thing to you. Serving, they want to serve other gods. They don't want to serve God. They want to serve other gods. Now, therefore, heed their voice. God told Samuel, listen to them. Give them what they want. However, you shall solemnly warn them and show them the behavior of the king who will reign over them. So God was telling Samuel, listen to what they saying and give them what they want. But I want you to tell them the behavior of the king that's going to reign over them. Because at the end of the day, God is the one that's going to make the final decision who that king was. God knew who that king was. God knew the personality of that king. God knew the hidden secrets of, the, of his heart. God knew everything about that king. And God warned them. He said, he told Samuel, tell them what the behavior of their king is going to do to them and what the behavior of their king is going to look like. Church hurt. That's why it's so much church hurt. Because we serving leadership. 
we serving other gods and we not serving God. That's where the church hurt come in at. And I'm not attacking leadership. I'm talking about the people serving leadership before God. This is what the Lord told me in my spirit, and I'm going to teach on it. I'm going to bring it. When the Lord give it to me, I'm getting on here, and I'm going to teach what the Lord gave me. And he said, we faithful to leadership, but we're not being faithful to God. And he's right, because I was doing it too. He's right. We so consumed with leadership that we done left God completely out. Let's go back to the word. Exodus 8, chapter, we're Exodus 8, chapter 10 now. So Samuel told all the word of the Lord to the people who asked him for a king. And he said, this will be the behavior of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons. And appoint them for his own chariots and to be his horsemen. And some will run before his chariots. He will appoint captains over his, over his thousands and captains over his fifties. Will set some to plow his ground and reap his harvest. And some to make his weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers, cooks, and bakers. And he will take the best of your fields, your vineyards, and your olive groves, and give them to his servants. He will take a tenth of your grain and your vintage and give it to his officers and servants. And he will take your men servants and your maid servants and... and and your finest young men and your donkeys and put them to his and put them to his work. He will take a tenth of your sheep and you will be his servants. Now this is what God was telling Samuel to tell Israel for rejecting him. This is the behavior of your king. This is what you can expect from the king that's getting ready to reign over you. Since you rejected me as God. Now in verse 18 it says. And you will cry out in that day. Because of your king. Whom you have chosen. For yourself. And the Lord. Will not hear you. In that day. Nevertheless. The people refused to obey. The voice of Samuel. And they said no. No. But we will have a king over us that we also may be like all the nations and, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. So they felt like if they had a tangible king, that everything was going to be all right. They felt like that if they had a tangible king, that he would be able to go out and fight their battles. But the battle is not ours. The battle is the Lord's. So you see how Satan will deceive us and make us feel like that if we serve leadership to the point of no return, that everything going to be all right? No. The only person that's supposed to be reigning over us and ruling over us is God Almighty. But we don't want God to rule over us. We want leadership. And you know why? Because we feel like we can go around the tree and get in, and get into position the easy way. Because when God promotes you and when God chooses you, you got to get on the potter's wheel. You got to go through a lot of fiery tests. You got to be tried. You got to be proved. And we don't want to go through that because it hurts. It make you feel like you're going crazy. It, it make you feel like you don't even want to live no more. Sometimes those trials can be so hard on you sometimes. Because God trying to see, do you really love him? God is trying to see, is your heart right? 
God is trying to see, can he trust you? God is trying to see these things about you. So he allowed these things to happen to prove us. But we want to serve leadership and be faithful in the Sunday morning services. Be faithful in Bible study. Be faithful in cleaning the bathrooms. Be faithful in running errands. Be faithful in being the pastor pet. And then you get promoted. Now you get to sit on a pulpit in front of the people and feel like you're important. But when you do that, you rejected God and you chose leadership to be over you. And when you get hurt, then you want to get on your knees and cry out to God about the things that you feel that's being, how you being treated. But you chose that. We chose that. We chose the lead. We chose for leadership to promote us instead of God. And we forget that leadership is still human. Leadership have fallen short of the glory of God, just like we have. Leadership have to drink water, just like we do. Leadership have to eat, just like we do. Leadership is not superhuman. Leadership still get angry. Leadership still have a bad day. Leadership still have to pray fast and seek the Lord for themselves. So what make leadership so much better than you? The person that we supposed to be seeking out is God. But we not doing that. God sent his only begotten son. Here on this earth to help us and show us. But we still reject Jesus too. Because we want to serve leadership. And as I said, I'm not attacking leadership. I'm coming on here and I'm teaching what the Lord told me to. And he said it clear. We so faithful to leadership, but it's hard for us to be faithful to God. And he was talking to me first. Because sometimes I don't want to get sit down and study. Sometimes I don't want to fast. Sometimes I don't feel like praying. But then you will make sure that you get up and you at church on Sunday. You will get up and make sure that you have Bible study. You will get up and make sure you go to work so you can have your offering and tithes and stuff for the, to make sure, so the pastor can see you put that in the offering basket. You could be sick. You will get up and do whatever the pastor asks you to do or, or the first lady asks you to do. You will get up and do it. You can be sick and you will still get up and move around. But we won't even... Throw our bodies out the bed and get on the floor and right there beside the bed and pray. Laying in the bed, we won't even get our Bibles and lay it right there in the bed and still study while you're laying. You're not feeling good in the bed. You still can sit there and study the word. Laying right there in the bed, not feeling good. You still can talk to the Lord. Then you see somebody walking down the street homeless. They you they Ask you for a dollar. No. But you go right to church and put $700 in on the offering plate. And you see that this person hungry and ain't got nothing. Even if they did go buy alcohol with the money. They asked you for it. You had it. And you said no. When you could have blessed them with a cold pop a hamburger, a bag of chips or something and going on about your day, you did your part. If they go buy alcohol with it, that's on them. But God saw that one of your brothers and sisters that's walking this earth was in need and you went in your pocket and you gave it to them. It's not for you to, to micromanage the money when you give it to them. Well, I'm going to give you this $10, but you bet not go spend it on no alcohol. Uh-uh, it don't work like that. 
If they ask you for something and you giving it to them from your heart, you give it to them and you go. It's not for you to start fussing at them and telling them. If you're going to start fussing and talking, start telling them about salvation. Ask them, do they know Jesus Christ? Is they saved? Is you seeking out the Lord? That's what you should be asking them. Not telling them how to spend the money. And that's what God sent me on here. I believe in my heart. He told me to get on here and bring it. We so faithful to leadership. But we reject God. And if we doing that, take inventory of your own self. And if we doing that, we need to repent. And we need to ask the Father to help us not to do this anymore. And to show us when we get into the point where we putting leadership before God. And that was the word that the Lord put in my heart. And I hope that this bless somebody that they will sit down and take time and think about their actions and what they do and be truthful with yourself. If you're doing it, don't put leadership before God. I'm not saying that it's wrong to be there and do things. But what I'm saying is that where we're going wrong it is when we put leadership before God. God is first. And sometimes you might have to tell leadership, no, I cannot do it because God told me this, that, and the other. See what I'm saying? God is first. And sometimes you have to tell leadership, well, God told me. If God really told you, then you have to tell them. But if you so, so serve a leadership to the point where you scared to open up and tell them what thus says the Lord then you 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 the main one that's putting leadership before God. And I love you, and I'll see you again next time. God bless you.